All right, a gatekeeper here. We got a um, a Texas Star DX250 right here, and uh, a good buddy of mine sent this to me. As you see, somebody's uh, equipped it with some MRF492s, 50 volt transistors, max transistor, 80 watt transistors. Um, supposedly it was just going to be a simple key and circuit replacement. I mean, key and transistor, excuse me. And uh, I replaced that real quick, and uh, I had these two Teflon wires like I usually do. To, and I did a little quick power wire upgrade for them. The power wire was pretty terrible that was on there. So anyway, I hooked it up, and uh, I quickly noticed that it still wasn't keying. And quickly figured out it was because there was no power getting to the relay up here. So I pretty much knew then there was a trace blown up under the board. That's usually what that needs is the trace blown or the switch is not working. And uh, I quickly figured out that all the switches were, were, were touchy. And the way the only way I could get it to work was to turn the uh, preamp switch on and the power switch on at the same time. Because when I turned that preamp switch on, then it was giving the power, you know, the switch the power. And uh, that diode was blown right there too on the on the relay. Well, anyway, so um, it was working then, and uh, I quickly figured out, man, there's two about. About two or three of these switches, man, are just broke. I mean, they're, they're, you got to turn them on a couple of times to even work. I hit my buddy up and let him know, you know, this is going to be a, a board pull and a switch replacement. And uh, at that point, you know, you're in a little bit of labor. And he said, ah, just keep it. Just keep it for parts. Well, I'm not going to keep it for parts. This is a good buddy of mine. I'm going to go ahead and take this to the next level and just do a switch replacement on here. I've only done this twice. It is tedious taking these switches off. It, it, I ain't going to lie to you. But if you do it just right, you should have no problems. I got a brand new uh, switch arrangement over there. Four, four switches. Um, th throw that on there so you'll have brand new switches on here. So uh, here we go. Let's... Uh, Here's a trace that was blown. <clears throat> right here. That trace. That trace leads. To right there. On the positive part of the relay. That's why the relay is not getting no power. So that was already blown when it came. And that's why I had to take a little jumper. And go from uh, usually to replace that without pulling the board you can just put you a little jumper from right here on, on the power switch I can't really point right there on that tab and uh, go over to the switch make a quick repair for that but uh, that's not the only issue like I said the switches are not working they're sticking and all this now I even soldered the tabs because a lot of times, because I noticed the lights wasn't coming on as, you know, every time, you know, it's touchy. Usually that soldering those tabs will fix that issue. But that, is, that wasn't the issue with these. The switches just went bad. The power switch is completely bad. The preamp's touchy. The SSB is touchy, too. The AM seems to be working just fine. All right, buddy. I'm going to jump on in this, see if I can't get this done real quick. It looks like somebody's retuned this amp, too for these 492s so that's good that's good all right we'll be back all righty looks like uh looks like the switches are ready to come off let's see if i can't hold There we go. Alrighty. 
didn't say take a switch array off. We'll call it a switch array. <clears throat> very easily and very carefully. <laughs> See now it ain't pushing, pushing in. Sometimes it's pushing in, sometimes it ain't. So that the, the preamp switch is pretty much not pushing in at all, just every once in a while. See that? That's how you know when the switch is, is gone. The, uh, this, this switch works just fine. The delay switch is kind of sticking sometimes, it seems. It seems to be doing good right there. But anyway, man, so uh, I'll take all these lenses off and take the bulbs out of them. They seem to be good. And uh, we'll put this over in a trash pile. Like I said, this is a four switch array. Just like this middle one's still good. So, you know, in the future, I may need to take this apart and use this middle one to replace just one that's bad but you know since i got a brand new one that's already ready to go man I ain't gonna waste spending an hour just doing that so we'll uh get that replaced for you <clears throat> get this trace fixed on the bottom and get it mounted back a lot of people would just trash this board over that because of the labor that's involved of taking these switch arrays off but uh, like i said man you're a one of my personal buddies, man, and uh, he gave me the option to just keep the amplifier for parts. I could have took that. I could have took that, but I wanted to at least give it a good stab, see if I can't fix it real quick for you, bud. Especially me going to the trouble putting all these power wire upgrade on here and all that. After I'd done all that, I was like, man, I got a little bit of time invested in this thing. I might as well keep going with it. <laughs> But it was doing about a hundred bird. Um, you know, it wasn't nothing absolutely magnificent, but it was doing about a hundred bird or so. That's about what these 20, uh, 250s do. All right, man, we're going to get this new, uh, new uh, switch on here and uh, switch array and uh, get it mounted back in the box. And uh, I have cleaned the board up pretty good for you too, cleaned the flux. And see, that's another reason why I do that, man. I started cleaning all the flux See, after I get done, I'll clean the back of this board real good, too. Get all that flux off there. But, um, after doing that, man, I found two pieces of solder that was just laying in the cracks of things, man. So that's another reason I do like to clean boards. And now that I got these switches out of here, I can clean some of the places I couldn't get to earlier. Alright, we'll be back. All right, my homeboy, Mr. Zero Three Four, or Three Four. All right, man, I got you all sewed up here, brother. Actually, all I had left laying around um, with a four switch arrangement like this array, arrangement. I don't even know if that's a word. Array. It was a brand new, and uh, these, these things aren't the cheapest things in the world. But I, I was trying to find a, a used one. And, you yeah, know, I got boards with them on it. But, you know, it probably took me another 30, 45 minutes to remove it. You know, I, I wasn't no need to do all that, man. But, uh, so anyway, I fixed your uh, pop trace on the bottom. I went ahead and ins insulated the bottom as well. Just to be on the safe side. Um, you know, these these boards are tend to short out on the bottom at times as the as heat gets to the boards and bow them up a little bit. There's certain spots under these 250, 350 boards that are good to put little insulators on, man, to keep that from uh, happening. So, uh, so anyway, man, we got the switch array on there for you, brother. Fix the switch, uh, fix the uh, trace, the blown trace. Um, I had you a little ground wire to at least ground the back side of this right here for the so 239 that's what that is right there I'd like to add at least one man you know just to be on the safe side it appears somebody threw a metal back there it's 100 pico ferret metal and like i said it appears that somebody had already changed the circuit for these 492s which is uh which is a good deal man that's a good deal so uh all right man 
Let's let you see what see what she's doing. We got it on 14.6 volts. We got it on the four watt radio. Four watts RMS. Let you see all the lights are working just fine on here. That one's a little touchy sometimes, I've noticed. See that right there? I've changed the bulb in it already. <clears throat> and uh, the rest of these have new bulbs as well. Um, I really don't know what's causing that, man. I've looked at it a couple of times, and and uh, it, sometimes it's just a little touchy when you're turning it on and off like that. But, uh, went ahead and soldered your tabs, even though this is brand new, so later on down the road, 20, 30 years down the road, you ain't gonna have no problem with that losing connection. All right, man. We'll go ahead and start on medium, as you can say. All right, four watts RMS. All right. Thousand watt slug. That gives us ooh, right there under 100 watts RMS. Ooh, here's your input tune. Input re reflect. Ooh, yeah, looking good. All righty. All right, here is your PEP. Ooh, yeah, so we're about 200 close to 250 watts getting close to it all right man this is now considered more of a high drive amplifier now that you got these 492s in here man so this really ain't no 250 no more so we're gonna hit it with the hot radio i'll let you see it on uh on high let you see the dead key first let you see what it's doing so you got about an 80 watt dead key Ooh, yeah. Swinging forward just a little hair over a hundred. Do ya RMS PP? That's a constant 250 for sure. All right, man. I'm gonna hook the hot radio up. Give this thing a little bit more drive. See if uh, see if she'll increase a little bit. All right, man. We got the hot radio hooked up. We're doubling our input drive from four watts RMS to eight watts. This is what it gives us. 1,000 watt slug. Ooh, that's about 150, 160 RMS. Ooh. All right, I'm a little curious about something, Andy. I want to hook this joker up on a little bit more uh, current and a tad bit more voltage. I'm just curious, you know. I just want to see... If it'll do 200 bird. I know you won't mind, Andy. I wouldn't do this just for any, you know, just to anybody's amp. I know you wouldn't mind since I know you will. <laughs> We're going to hook it up to the 100 amp on reg. I'm just going to burp it. That's all. Be back. All right, here we go. Let's see if it'll happen. Mm -hmm. 200 RMS. <laughs> PP close to 400, not quite about 380. I was just wanting to see if it'd do it. Of course, I would never run this amp on that high voltage, it was dropping about 17 volts. I just want to see if it'd do it, man. That just lets you know you still got more headroom in these transistors, a little bit more gain. Andy, I appreciate you sending this to me, bud. I know a lot of a lot of people would have just would have just kept it, you know, for parts or whatever. Because I mean, it it's a little pain. It, it is a little pain taking these these switch arrays out, man. These switches, they're, you know, they ain't exactly the easiest thing in the world by no means. But uh, you know, I know that you had, you had received this amp under special conditions, and I didn't want that special conditions to be for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Man, you know why. <laughs> so there you go, man. We're going to pop the top on it and get it shipped back with the old orange. Beautiful orange. Orange Crush 4 Banger. 
no gatekeeper out here around the northeast end of Georgia. You got anything you need done, sh give me a shout at threemanpro at gmail.com. That's T-H-R-E-E-M-A-N-P as in purple, R in radio at oscar.com, threemanpro. Or you can give me a shout out at info at gatekeeperamps.com. And just give me a holler. We'll go from there. 73rds. Bye-bye.